Good morning and welcome to the John DeVito Show. That's right, everybody. I'm live. I'm here. I'm actually in person. I haven't been doing many shows lately. Uh, Live, I've been recording a lot of podcasts and I'm dealing with my newfound celebrity status on TikTok. As my kids say, apparently now I am TikTok famous where I have 11,000 followers and I had one of my posts that went viral with, I think, 412,000 views as of this morning. So pretty cool, pretty amazing. It's good to be famous. Now, if I was just attractive, I would probably have like 800,000 views, but that's the price you deal with being a 53-year-old bald man. So anyway, we're here to talk about Thanksgiving. We're going to talk about a couple of current events, a couple of things I want to talk about. I don't want to keep it too, too heavy today, but I want to get on, just chat and have some fun. And uh, this isn't going to be a terribly long show, but I wanted to get on before Thanksgiving and do a brief show. So welcome, everybody, to the John DeVito Show. We are officially in cold season here in New England. Last night, I went out to get the mail. Of course, at this time of year, it gets dark at like 4.30 in the afternoon. And I went out to get the mail at probably 6 p.m. And it was dark, pitch black. And of course, I had shorts on like I always do in my house because we have our pellet stove Uh, blazing. And for those that don't know what a pellet stove is in warmer climates, you've probably seen or heard of wood stoves. Well, here in New England, we have pellet stoves where you have little bags of pellets and you pour those into a stove and you can basically get through one bag of pellet uh, pellets in 24 hours. And it really heats your house up nicely. It's a lot easier than a wood stove. And I would never live in a cold climate again without one. But last night I walked up to the mailbox 6 p.m. to get my mail in my shorts and of course in my slides. <laughs> and I will do this until it snows and even afterwards sometimes. But man, it was like 18 degrees last night and it was cold. It was cold, man. So anyway, hey, Doc Bear, welcome to the show. Jeremiah, welcome to the show. Welcome to everybody coming in. We're going to talk about a little bit about Thanksgiving today, or probably a lot about Thanksgiving, and we are going to talk about some other subjects as well, uh, predominantly the Waukesha incident that happened in Wisconsin. Again, a couple of days ago, and this is just another tragedy that could have been prevented. It could have been, you know, stopped from happening if we had just arrested a criminal. This guy in Waukesha was a career criminal. He had been arrested time and time again. He was let off on you know, bail a multitude of times. And again, now we've got you know, six people dead, 60 people injured at a Christmas parade, a place where you should be able to go with your family and feel safe. But now that has been taken away from us also because of this person, Daryl Brooks. So I see maybe Cummings is here. Good to see you, Mr. Cummings. Hopefully everything go- is going well with you. But uh, so for everybody out there, what are you guys doing for Thanksgiving? We got the big day tomorrow. Um, I have to get up tomorrow morning and I'm going to drive to New Hampshire to pick up my father. My father lives uh, about an hour and 20 minutes away from me. He is 81 years old and, uh, you know, he's hanging in there. He's got dementia, which has been tough, and uh, he's been dealing with some health issues lately. So tomorrow is going to be a bit of a, you know, a bit of a challenge to get him down here because what I have to do with my dad, this is kind of funny. He doesn't really like public gatherings, but we don't want him to be alone on Thanksgiving. So if I go up tomorrow and I tell him that we're coming to my house for Thanksgiving, he will not come. He will not relent. He will not allow me to put him in my car and bring him to my house. So I basically have to trick him. I tell him that we are going to his favorite coffee shop, which we do go to, so it's not completely a lie, but we drive to a place that he loves called Heavenly Donuts. We go into Heavenly Donuts and we get him his coffee, we get him his donut, and then we get back in the car and we start driving towards my house, which again is about, you know, hour and 20 minutes, hour and 30 minutes, somewhere in that ballpark. So we start driving him (laughs) to my house and it usually takes him like a good 20 minutes to a half an hour to ask me where we're going. And by that point, we're a good portion of the way towards my house. So at that point, I'll say, Dad, what do you mean? We're going to my house for lunch. I don't tell him it's Thanksgiving because if I tell him for Thanksgiving, that's too much. So I literally tell him maybe a quarter of the way or halfway there that we're going to my house just to have lunch so he can see the kids. So he usually agrees to that. And then by the time we get to the house, at that point, he comes in, realizes there's other people there, and he realizes there is a Thanksgiving celebration that day. and He kind of goes with it. Now, we did have one incident. Now, this is kind of a funny story. We oh no, not really funny, but it is kind of funny. We had an incident where <clears throat> my father came to my house 
maybe like a month or so ago. So I had to run some errands. So I dropped him off at the house with my kids. He was doing great that day. You know, if you know people with dementia, sometimes they do well, other times they struggle. He was doing pretty well that day. So I left to go run some errands. And then all of a sudden I get a phone call from one of my kids and goes, dad, grampy's gone. I'm like, what do you mean grampy's gone? Grampy's gone, dad. So I'm literally at this point, like 40 minutes away from my house. I'm like, oh my God. So I called the local police department and I said, all right, I don't think this is an emergency, but my 81 year old father who has dementia was, was with my kids and he left the house and we don't know where he is. And I live in a small town out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, he really can't walk to any place here. I mean, and you know, it's a small town where a lot of people know my family in town. So, you know, the, the police actually came to my house They picked up my two youngest kids and they drove them around looking for my father. So they see my father and he is literally, I would say a good mile away from my house, walking down the main road of route 122 a near my house. Now it's a fairly busy road where the cars are going about 50 miles an hour. And he was trudging along, walking along that road. So the police pull over and they turn the lights on and they pull over and they say, excuse me, are you Mr. DeVito? And he looks, he goes, yes, I am. And they said, well, it seems like you left your your son's house and they were concerned about you. You know, where are you going? So he, he looked at the police. He said, well, to be honest with you, I'm kind of sick of being at my son's house. And I figured I would walk home. <laughs> so they look at him and they're like, well, Mr. DeVito, you know, that's kind of a long walk getting back to New Hampshire. So, you know, that is uh, you know probably a good hour and a half drive by car. And he said, well, I think I'm making pretty, pretty good progress. I'm almost at the highway. I mean, honestly, he was probably five miles away from the highway. So at that point, they said, well, Mr. DeVito, we can't let you walk all that way. And my father looks and goes, oh, don't worry. I'm just going to hitchhike. <laughs> so, so the cop looks at my father and goes, well, you do realize that hitchhiking now is illegal and you can't do that. He's like, well, I don't give a damn. I used to do that in my day. And if I want to hitchhike, I'm going to hitchhike. So the officer at that point said, okay, well, I'll tell you what, why don't you hop in and we'll give you a ride. So they drove him back to my house and uh, brought him back. And my wife was there and I got home shortly afterwards. So we were able to corral my father, get him home. And then I drove him back to his house in New Hampshire. So anyway, that's what I deal with, with my dad. And I see Cummings's comment down here. And I, I know, man, you know, Cummings is talking about his grandpa died this year and you're going to be doing Thanksgiving at your house. It is really, really hard to lose people that you love during the holidays. I mean, I lost, you know, 13 years ago, I lost my mother. And then over the last several years, we lost my mother-in-law. We lost uh, my father-in-law this July on July 1st, which was really, really traumatic. But, you know, it's, it's hard to lose people. We're down right now to just my father. And he's the oldest living guy. He's 81 years old and he's struggling. So it's hard to see people suffer. It's hard to have relatives pass away. And that does sometimes make the holidays a little bit more painful and a little bit more difficult, you know? So I see Cummings mentioning if they approve a dementia vaccine and it works, are you going to have him take it? So, you know, maybe, I don't know, but my father, he's really tough. He doesn't like taking medication at all. But if, if there is a dementia medicine that helps him, then we would certainly give it a try. I mean, cause he, he's really a very healthy, healthy guy with the exception of him now having dementia. And the reason how he got dementia was he had a, had a stroke a few, a few years back, probably like four years ago now. And that brought on vascular dementia. So he's been doing better you know, because he did uh, have some therapy, but he just has no short term memory. I mean, he'll remember where all of his friends lived like 50 years ago. But if you ask him what happened like five minutes ago, he doesn't remember. So welcome to everybody coming into the show. If you're here for the first time, welcome. Please give me a follow. Please let me know where you're from in the chat. And today we're talking about Thanksgiving and what makes it special. So I'm excited for Thanksgiving here. We're having it at our house tomorrow. My wife is a phenomenal cook. I am useless in the kitchen, so I'm not going to be helping too much. But she's really good at preparing Thanksgiving dinner. We have, um, you know, we're going to have a smaller group than usual this year, and it has nothing to do with COVID. It has to do with just, you know, not as many people being around. Uh, Sometimes we have one of my brother-in-laws come. They're going to be going to Boston this year. My other brother-in-law has uh, some back issues, so he's not going to be coming. So it's going to be just the six members of my family, my father and my sister. So we're going to be you know, only at eight people, I think, this year. In some years, we've had close to 20. So this is going to be a little bit different of a, of a Thanksgiving celebration. And I know some of my kids are sad because, you know, grandpa's not going to be here. But, you know, honestly, 
no matter how many or how few people you have at your Thanksgiving Day table, you know, you, you really need to celebrate the day. You need to be thankful for the gifts you've been given in this life. If you have your health and you have a roof above your head, you, you don't have to be wealthy. You don't have to have everything perfect in your life. You know, maybe you haven't met the right person yet. It's all okay. You know, I do believe that God has you on a path and you're going to be on a path that he's already predetermined in your life. And you literally just have to open your heart up and allow God to come into your heart. And you, at that point, will find your way. You will find your way in this life. I mean, you have to be present in your life. You have to be proactive in your life. You can't just sit back and wait for things to happen. But I think if you're trying to do the right things in life and you're trying to move forward and you're open to receiving the lead that God gives you, you know, good things will happen in your life. So Tulian, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming in. And I'm just kind of you know, curious now, what are, the, what are some of the favorite foods you have on Thanksgiving Day? I mean, for me, you know, I've been on a diet and I've got to update you on my diet progress. Now I was getting pretty heavy. You know, I had never been as heavy as I was uh, over the last couple of years. You know, we had four kids, I've spent all my time driving them to sports, coaching their sports. And when you have four kids, all you do is drive them around. All you do is go to sports. I mean, to give you the general idea, between my two youngest sons this past spring and summer, they played a combined well over 100 baseball games. So my wife and I are like dividing and conquering, going to different cities, you know, going to like four baseball games on a weekend. Then they play football, basketball, you know, they snowboard. My daughter's working and, you know, isn't driving yet. She will hopefully on December 4th when she has her driving test and that'll help us immensely. But I haven't been taking care of myself. So finally, I went to the doctor back in August. Some of you probably remember this. And I had high blood pressure for the first time in my life. I hadn't been to the doctor since before COVID. And my blood pressure, they almost literally sent me to the hospital from my physical, where my blood pressure, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was something like 190 over 115. And the doctor looked at me and said, is your blood pressure normally here? And I looked at the screen and I said, you know, I don't know a lot about blood pressure. I've learned more since then. I'm like, I don't think so. That looks high to me. It's not normally there. And the doctor looked at me and said, well, we are very close right now from calling the ambulance and sending you directly to the emergency room because you may be in cardiac arrest right now. So they thought I was having a heart attack when I was at the doctor that particular day. And that literally scared the living heck out of me, as you can imagine. Again, I'm 53 years old. I'm not young but I'm not, you know, 80 years old either. And I've got four kids. My oldest is 19. My youngest is almost 13. And I don't want to leave my kids alone. So this really terrified me. So I decided that I was going to not go on a diet, but do a lifestyle change. And that's what I'm calling this. And that is what this is going to be. And so far, as of this morning, I am just shy of 50 pounds down. Now I have a ways to go. I was heavy. So I'm going to lose probably another 40 pounds. So I'm looking at a total of about 90 pounds and then I'll assess where I am at that point. But for me right now, I mean, my clothes are too big. You know, I'm down to the last hole of my belt and it feels great, but uh, I am, I am going to take a day off tomorrow and I am going to eat on Thanksgiving day. So I see Cummings mentioned he loves sweet potato casserole. Oh my God, that is so good. My sister makes something very similar to that. And oh my God, it comes in like a big glass platter and she puts like marshmallows on top of it. It is so good. Now, one of the things here, I'm looking at this list online and number one on the list, I completely disagree with. I don't know how anybody likes this, but they're saying that one of the top foods that people love on Thanksgiving is cranberry sauce. I don't like cranberry sauce at all. You know, we get that like that little block of cranberry, whatever it is, and we cut it into pieces and it's just disgusting. I know my son, Brandon, actually loves cranberry sauce, but for me, I don't like it at all. Now, the second one on the list is the gravy. Again, I must be weird, but I don't love gravy. For me, I like my turkey in my food really without gravy. I, I have friends, you know, in my family and things like that that love to have their plate of food and they literally take the gravy and pour it like all over the mashed potatoes, all over the stuffing and all over the turkey. I don't do that. I put like a little bit of dab maybe on the turkey. I don't put it on my mashed potatoes at all. Now, stuffing is something that's on the list. And, you know, for a long time, I didn't like stuffing, but stuffing has become kind of a favorite of mine over the years. And I love my stuffing. So I do that. One of my favorites that my mother-in-law used to make and now my wife makes is the green bean casserole. I don't know if anybody in your house makes that or if any of you guys have that, but that is absolutely one of my favorite things on the list. And of course, you know, my favorite pie 
I don't know what type of pies you guys like. I mean, I like pretty much any type of pie, but my favorite pie is without question pumpkin pie, probably followed very closely by apple pie and then custard pie. I'm a pie guy, so I, I'm going to have to definitely have a few slices of pie tomorrow. <laughs> and that'll make my day. And then I won't weigh myself for like three or four days after the fact. So I see uh, maybe coming, making some comments in there. He does like the cranberry sauce. Yeah, you know, I know I'm weird. I don't know what it is. I don't like it. My son, Brandon, that's like his favorite thing. He literally loves it. But for me, it's just not a thing. Now, I'm looking at another list also. We've got some of the worst foods uh, on Thanksgiving that people do not like. Now, some of these really surprise me. Now, stuffing is the number one thing on the list that people do not like. And apparently 23% of people surveyed don't like stuffing. I mean, for me, I really enjoy the stuffing. Now, the next one I get, coleslaw. We don't serve coleslaw at Thanksgiving. And, you know, I never really even liked that. You know, back in the day at school lunch, you always had coleslaw every day that came in like a little container. And I don't think I ever really ate the coleslaw. I mean, I don't despise it, but certainly that wouldn't uh, be something I waste <laughs> precious stomach space on on Thanksgiving. Now, another one that people don't like is ham. Now, I don't love ham. Ham, it says 21% of the people don't like ham on Thanksgiving. Now, for me, you know, ham could never replace turkey. But if we have ham in addition to turkey, and we've done that some years when we have a lot of people that come for dinner, then that wouldn't bother me. I mean, I would definitely go to the turkey first and maybe have a slice of ham. I wouldn't say I disliked it. But again, it's one of those things where you only have so much space in that stomach and you have to put in there, you know, what you really want. Mashed potatoes, 17% of the people don't like that. I do like mashed potatoes. Macaroni and cheese, 14% of the people do not like macaroni and cheese on Thanksgiving. And that kind of surprises me. Um, I don't really eat it on Thanksgiving, but we do make it and my kids like it. So they always have macaroni and cheese on Thanksgiving. Corn, 13% of the people dislike corn. I love corn. I mean, I love corn in the cob in the summer. I always have corn on Thanksgiving. So that's something that I would definitely not miss. And I uh, really enjoy corn. This one I totally get, carrots. Carrots are something that I do not like. I do not really eat them. I, I don't mind soft carrots. But if the carrots are like hard, then I stay away from them. And I've got a funny story for all of you. I remember when I was a kid, my, we would always go on Sundays to my grandmother's house in uh, right near Boston. She was the best grandmother. My Nana, she was amazing. She died when I was in college, you know, at the age of 85 years old. And, you know, I didn't always have the perfect home growing up. So going to my grandmother's house was always like a sanctuary. It was like a safe space. It was a place I really enjoyed going to. And I remember we would go there every Sunday, or not every Sunday, but almost every Sunday for like a dinner. And we would have a lot of the holidays at her house. And she was a really good cook and all that type of thing. So I remember going to her house one year when I was little and she was forcing me to eat my dinner. She was you know, really good at making roast beef. I loved roast beef dinners at her house, but she always had carrots on the plate. And her rule was that you had to eat your carrots. And I despised carrots, did not want them, didn't want to eat them, did everything I could to get out of it. But she forced you to eat your vegetables. So I remember one year. I very slyly, I thought, took my carrots and very quickly kind of put them down in my hand, you know, underneath the table when I thought nobody was looking. And I just got up and told everybody I had to go to the bathroom. So I went to the bathroom. And for whatever reason, I don't know what I was thinking. I did not flush them down the toilet. I should have flushed them. I should have thrown them in the trash. But again, my little, whatever it was, six, seven-year-old mind, you know, couldn't think I had that much. I think I was afraid of clogging the toilet. So I took the carrots and she had like this decorative doily toilet paper cover thing on the back of the toilet. So I literally lifted up this doily and I put the carrots in the center of the toilet paper roll. So I put like five, you know, mushy carrots in there and then put the toilet paper roll back down, figuring, of course, my grandmother would never look there, right? I mean, who's ever going to need another roll of toilet paper? So of course, later that day, you know, I did get my dessert. So apparently no one had seen me initially. I did get my dessert. But my grandmother at one point had to go into the bathroom and apparently there was no toilet paper left. And she, of course, picked up the doily decorative thing on the back of the toilet and out popped my carrots. So I did get into a little bit of trouble, but I think that she did at least appreciate my ingenuity at that point where I got out of eating, you know, my carrots and uh, did that. So I, I've got a lot of good memories of being at my grandmother's house for Thanksgiving and Christmas. You know, what are some of your good memories? I mean, when you think back on your childhood, do you have great memories of Thanksgiving? Do you have great memories of Christmas? You know, do you have plans this year for any of the holidays? Or are you looking at something where maybe you might be a little bit lonely this year? You know, there, there was one year 
when I was younger, you know, I was in my early twenties and I decided that I no longer wanted to be with my parents for Thanksgiving. So I was considering moving to California at that point. And thank God I didn't because that place has turned into an absolute cesspool. But I thought about moving to California. So I went out and visited a good friend of mine, this girl, Christine, we were just friends, just plutonic friends. That's all it was. But I went out to visit her over the Thanksgiving day break. She was living in Santa Monica, California. We had Thanksgiving at her house and we spent the rest of the day on the beach and it was just a beautiful day. But I always think back, you know, that was a, that was a Thanksgiving where I could have spent that year with my mother. I could have spent that year with my father, my grandparents, and I chose not to. And I went out and spent it, you know, with some friends and it was good. It was fun. But, you know, at the same breath, it also wasn't um, something I probably would do again if I had the opportunity. But, you know, I got a lot of good Thanksgiving memories. I think one of the things that I did a lot is that as a kid, um, when I was in high school, I played football on Thanksgiving. That was always the big game every year. We have like a Thanksgiving Day football game. And one of the things that still kind of bums me out to this day, my senior year in high school, you know, I was being recruited all over the country by a lot of big colleges. I was a good football player. I was getting recruited by, you know, Penn State, Notre Dame, Tennessee. I went down on a visit to Memphis and I ended up going to a one double A school up in New England, uh, University of Rhode Island. But um, I remember my senior year in high school, you know, it was kind of the height of, you know, just the coolness factor for, of me playing football. I was captain of the team. It was my last game, Thanksgiving Day, senior year. And a few days before Thanksgiving, we had a major snowstorm where we had literally like, I think it was actually on Thanksgiving Day for that matter. We had like something like 30 inches of snow or 25 inches of snow. And after the storm, it got really cold and all the snow turned into ice. So I remember most of the other schools in the area played their games on Thanksgiving Day despite the snow. And my school canceled their game, figuring we would play it on the Saturday after Thanksgiving. Well, the snow was more substantial than they thought. It froze over and turned to ice. And back in those days, you know, we didn't play on turf. It was grass. And uh, they couldn't plow the field, so they canceled the last game I ever played in high school, which was a huge disappointment. I mean, that was kind of my swan song to high school, my last Thanksgiving Day football game as a senior, as a captain. And if you look back on the records, we never played that game, which was kind of sad. So, hey, I got my buddy uh, Jeremy Cummings to join. And hold on one second. Let me, let me make sure I've got my call buttons on so I can actually hear you. Are you there, my friend? Yeah. Hey, how you doing, brother? Uh, I'm doing all right. Yeah, it's good. So what's going on with you? Uh, nothing. I was just sitting here listening at you this morning and like some of the stuff you were talking about. So, you know how you call it stuffing? Yes. Yeah. We don't call it that here. What do you call it in Alabama? Dressing. What is it? Dressing. Dressing. Really? I've never heard that before. So you called the stuffing dressing. Wow. Yep. Huh? Now, are you a big fan of dressing or stuffing or what, what are your favorite oh, yeah. foods? Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever, uh, have you ever had a uh, pepper sauce? Pepper sauce? I have not. No. What is that? It's it, it's these little peppers. They sell them in a jar. It's these little peppers, and they fill it up with vinegar, and it creates and like you know you put it on stuff for flavor. It's really popular in the South. But man, my grandpa would always do that. In the past couple of years, he got me into that, and I was like, Dad, gummin, I can't do it this year. Oh boy. Yeah, how are you feeling? I mean, it must be tough for you being, I know you lost your grandfather and he was very, very important in your life. And how Oh, man, you I haven't even got to tell you. Yeah. Uh, we, we lost him during a month later, month to the day we buried my wife's grandmother. And then six months to the day, my aunt just died. Oh, you're kidding. I didn't know that. I'm sorry to hear that. Prayers to your brother. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, our family's gotten a lot smaller this year. Yeah, that's, as I mentioned earlier, that's kind of what we're dealing with this year. You know, as you know, you know, we had my father-in-law pass away in July and one of his brothers passed away a month later. And then another brother had a stroke and he's now in a nursing home. And then another brother, he had four brothers. Another one of his brothers just had heart surgery. So we've been hit by, you know, one thing after another, the second half of this year. And it's made it tough. It's made it really tough, you know, with my father also having a ton of health issues. I mean, we're fortunate still to have him. He's 81 years old, but he's having a real tough time. So it's really hard when you see your loved ones get older and they get sick and things like that. And, you know, I'm always thinking about you because it sounds like your grandfather was kind of like a, a father figure to you. Oh, yeah. He was my dad. Yeah. Uh, I, I was, he, he raised me. Now, what, what were some of the good memories you had of your grandfather growing up? I mean, give us some holiday memories maybe that you have of him. Oh, God, man. He was never, like, when I was a kid, if if there was a – you would never expect it because I don't know if I, I've ever told anybody this or not, 
but I, I mean, I've got pictures of him. I'll, I'll send you a picture. Let me see if I can send you one now, actually, just so. Um, I've got my phone right next to me, so text it on. I'd like to take a look at it and see it. My grandpa, man, he legit looked like a Mexican. Did he really? Yeah, so we always, I always thought of him as the Mexican version of Clark Griswold when it comes to Christmas. <laughs> I love that. He did, man. Like, well, his his great grandmother, his grandmother, was a uh, native, right? So, yeah. I mean, he was really dark. I've got, you know, I'm during the winter. I drive my wife crazy because she's like, "Oh, I'm so pasty," and you know, and I'm I'm not. I'm olive skin tone year round. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, see, I'm the same way. It's, if you look at my family, I mean, my wife, very light skin. Three of my children, very light skin. But then my oldest son has skin like I do. And I'm, I'm always dark. And in the summer, I get really dark. But even in the winter, you know, I'm still pretty dark. It's just like an all natural olive skin. Uh, so now you, you mentioned your grandfather. Did he do all the Christmas lights and the things like that? Like, Oh, like- man. When I was a kid, there used to be people that would drive. Like they would – we lived out on a – we lived out on a road that was considered a highway, but it wasn't a highway. It was just a county road. And it was, it's still, it's still one of the most dangerous roads in the county because so much traffic goes through it, you know? But man, there would be people drive and they would just, they, it would just be a line of cars just looking like, oh my God, look at all those lights. Right. Uh, he got where he couldn't do that anymore though. And, um, uh, which I mean, you know, that was, you it's know, hard. expected. It's hard. It, it's hard to see, you know, our loved ones, um, you know, get older and pass. And I mean, it's gonna be, it's gonna be very hard for me. Hey, Doc Brown, welcome to everybody coming in. Chris, good to see you. Everybody that just popped into the show, thank you for coming in. We're just talking a little bit about Thanksgiving, some of the Thanksgiving memories that have been, you know, kind of special to us over the years. And Cummings. Uh, came in and called in and was talking about his grandfather and some of the good memories he has of him. And, you know, same thing here. Like I talked about my going to my grandparents' house on Thanksgiving and Christmas. I mean, they're just special, special memories. But, you know, the way I'm thinking about it now is, you know, my kids are getting older. And it's funny. We've been talking about some of the Christmas memories from when my kids were young. And one of the funny stories coming, you'll like this story. And this was at the time, not very funny to my kids, but it's funny now. They laugh like hell. One year, my son, Ethan, his, he wanted a drone so bad. He, I don't know how old he was, but he was probably 11, maybe 12. That was the number one thing on his Christmas list. He wanted a drone. So we bought him a drone or Santa Claus brought a drone and we, we live in the woods. So our house is set back in the woods and we've got a lot of trees around the house and things like that. And the first mistake we made was trying to fly the drone in the backyard because we have a ton of trees. So Ethan, Tried to fly it, didn't know what he was doing, crashed it into the house once, and then he kind of got it up, but then it crashed again, and I look at him, and I'm like, all right, buddy, let me see the drone. I'll show you how to do it. So I take the controller from him, and this is true, true story. <laughs> Christmas Day, backyard. It was a nice warm day that year, and I pushed the button up for the drone to go up. So it starts going up straight. But I didn't know how to stop it from going up straight. So the thing is just going, going, going. It's up above our house. It's up above the top of the trees. And I could not figure out how to bring it back down. There was a separate button for down. and I couldn't find it. I didn't have my reading glasses on, so I couldn't see it. So next thing I know, the drone goes to the left and crashes at the top of like a, I don't even know, 150 foot tall evergreen tree and literally landed right on the top of the tree gone so this thing there was no way we could get this thing down it was so high unless we had like a helicopter to go up and bring it down my kid starts crying and he's like dad that was my favorite present oh my god you lost it on the top of a tree and you oh my god my kids were all upset and i'm like there we go john way to make a positive christmas memory for your kids but that year i met you know, we were just talking about that the other day and my kids were all laughing like hell one of them made a comment they're like oh yeah dad remember the christmas where you crashed Ethan's drone in the top of the tree. Give it to me. I'll show you how it's done. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's one of those things where I think as adults now, you know, if we have kids in the house, we need to find ways to create special traditions for our kids. You know, we are now the older people in the family. We are now the ones that create those memories. And I'm sure that you probably are, I would imagine, a phenomenal father at Thanksgiving and Christmas. You've got your daughter. You know, what type of special things have you done? I guess through the holidays to kind of make it special for your little girl. Oh, we do the like I'm I'm Clark I'm Clark Griswold by the way. Are you really? Uh, I, love it. 
I love it. I love uh, it. Christmas is my favorite time of the year. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. I, you know, like I, I can't wait to get through Thanksgiving yeah. just so I can get to Christmas. I hear you. I'm the same way. We, we are know, strict, the we're, strict, we're strict in the Devito house. We do wait until after Thanksgiving, but once Friday hits, all bets are off. We're, we we flip over to Christmas quickly. <laughs> oh no, my tree's already up, dude. Yeah, I tried to convince my wife to do that. She's like, let's wait till Friday. I'm like, all right. So I kind of cave. We do have the like the candle lights in the windows, but we don't have the tree up yet. So that's cool. Um, I've I've already got a half string of lights going down the front of my house. So um, now, does she help you with any of these traditions? Does she help you decorate decorate? No, she just likes to watch. Yeah. You know, that's how my kids always were in you know, the last year. I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was COVID or me just being lazy. I'm not sure what it was, but last year I did not really do a lot of lights outside, but I've been talking to my daughter who's now 16 and I'm like, listen, I need some help. You know, I do a lot because I would do the same thing. My house would be crazy decorated for Christmas and I haven't done it as much. I was like, listen, if you want to learn how to do it this year, because as you know, Cummings, putting up the lights and things like that is kind of an acquired skill where you can only have a certain number of, you know, lines together and you got to have the extension cords and there's quite a bit to putting up the lights. So she is going to help you this year. And we're going to get back to kind of decorating the house again a little bit more this year. So what do you do in addition to the lights? Like explain if you can what your house looks like at Christmas time. Uh, we've got the blow up inflatable Frosty and Santa. And then we've got the light. It's some kind of weird. I don't know what you call it. It's like a cutout of Santa that's lit up. that uh, it lights up. And then we've got the, I don't know where my crosses went. I've got a massive Ooh. cross. Nice. That's cool. And you, do you light it up? Do you put like a light on the cross? It's got it? it's got red and white lights on it. That's awesome. That's really cool. See, I need something like that. I do have, like, I've got inflatables. And one of the inflatables kind of has a funny story. Let me tell this really quickly. I think you guys will appreciate this. There was this father. There was on my son's football team a couple of years ago. And they kind of excluded my son from a sleepover, a football sleepover at their house. He was the only kid from my town not invited to their house for the sleepover. My son took it well, but he was pretty upset, you know. So this guy is kind of a douche. He makes, like, comments to my wife all the time about me. He's just kind of a dick. I don't like the guy at all. So we went to this uh, football banquet at the end of the year. And there was like a silent auction where you go up and, you know, you write your name on a list and you bid a certain amount for certain things. There was a Patriots themed uh, Christmas blow up inflatable that was up for auction. And I saw his name on the list. So at that point, I'm like, okay, you know, my wife and I have some decent resources. We're going to win this damn thing. So I went and he and I went back and forth probably 30 times. And at the end, I went right before the auction happened and wrote, wrote an absolutely stupid amount of money down. And I probably could have bought it for half that amount by going on to Amazon. But you know what? I won the damn inflatable. And I remember he purposely went and bid on a Dustin Pedroia signed baseball that my name was on. And he beat me on that. And I didn't even want the Dustin Pedroia baseball. He overpaid for that. But I got that Christmas inflatable that I knew he wanted. And that damn thing is in my yard every year. And I'm proud to have it. And I don't mind saying that I was petty <laughs> when I bid on that and I won it. And it went to a good cause. So the money went to a good buck cause, but I definitely overpaid. But I've got the inflatables. And we have, right in front of my garage, we have this big, at one point it was a bush, but it's almost like a giant Christmas tree now. And we're going to decorate that like a tree. We've got like, you know what I, you know what I like? I've got the old school blow molded Santa Clauses and Christmas candles. We have an old blow molded uh, nativity that I'm going to put up on our small farmer's porch that people really like. We've got that. It all lights up, and that's kind of cool because I do like to remember, and I think all of us should, you know, what the season is really about also. It's not just about sand and gifts. It's about, you know, the big man upstairs as well. So hopefully people remember that coming into the season, you know. Yeah, I think people forget that. They do. Well, uh, you know, I, th I think society, you know, we all focus on the presence and we all focus on, you know, Santa Claus. And again, though, you know, I've, I've done shows on this in previous years. When you look at the true origins of Santa Claus, I mean, Santa Claus was St. Nicholas and St. Nicholas was a real person. He was a, an actual saint. And I love the story of St. Nicholas where he was a very wealthy man and he gave away a lot of his fortune. And I love the story that in the town that he lived in, I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but I remember he went to a family's house. There was a family who was so poverty stricken that they were going to actually have to sell their daughters. And he went to the house. And one of the reasons why, I don't know if anybody, everybody knows this, one of the reasons why we put stockings up by the fireplace is he took a small bag of gold and threw it in through an open window and it landed 
on drying socks by the fireplace from earlier in that day. So the family woke up on Christmas morning and had a bag of gold on one of the stockings that was being dried in front of the fireplace. And that's how the tradition of people putting up stockings on their fireplace in hopes that St. Nicholas will come to deliver money came from an actual story that really happened from the true St. Nicholas. So, you know, when I hear, when I think of stories like that, you know, people say Santa Claus doesn't represent anything more than commercialism. It really isn't true because, I mean, he is he was a saint. He was based on a saint. And if you Google old pictures of St. Nicholas and what he looked like, I mean, he literally dressed in the red outfit. He looked a lot like, you know, the traditional Santa Claus that we see today. And he was a man of giving. So for me, you know, I, my, my son was saying last night, I was driving him to a party and he said, yeah, I remember that one year for Christmas. You know, that was back when I believed in Santa Claus. And I said to him, and I mean this with every ounce of my being, I still believe in Santa Claus. I don't believe in the traditional guy that comes down the chimney to deliver presents. But if you look at a person being St. Nicholas, whose legend and story has lasted for several hundred years, and at this time of year, you know, happiness and love and all these positive things take over the earth, then maybe Santa Claus is real. Maybe the spirit of Christmas is a real thing, and maybe that does come from somewhere. So if that's the case, the legend of St. Nicholas, you know, does influence the way we feel at this time of year. And if that's the case, Santa Claus is in actuality real. So I you know that's, that's a bit of a mouthful, Cummings, but, you know, I mean, that's kind of how I look at the whole story of uh, St. Nicholas and Santa Claus. So what, what do you think about that? I mean, I know you're a Christian and you certainly have the true reason for the season at heart, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think that people get too caught up in the, like, I don't like the, you know, this is this is a hundred percent true. I don't like to get stuff. Like right. I just I, don't. I don't either. I get nothing for Christmas. I don't care at this point in my life. You know, I haven't been that way. I haven't been like, oh, I want something for Christmas. Probably since, dude, I can't even remember the last thing I like. I, I mean, maybe I was fifteen, sixteen years old. Maybe right. But like that, that sort of just died for me. And it's just like I don't want to get. I want to give. You know. Exactly. And it's, it's just like I, I get my enjoyment out of seeing people get stuff. And it's just um, like my grandpa every year, he got something weird. And I like it's not weird, but he got something that for me that was always off the wall that he never thought he needed, but he got it. And he was like, you know what? You do this every year. And my, um, like, I get people stuff that they wouldn't, that, like, you, like, I look at it and I'm like, yeah, they need that. And they, they don't even know they need it till they get it. And they're like, oh, my God, you know what? I do need that. It's true. It's true. And I see Chris's comment down below. He doesn't like shopping. Chris, I'll tell you, I agree with you 100%. You know, I, I don't mind going into the mall and kind of getting the feel for Christmas where the decorations are up. Maybe they're playing some Christmas music. But as far as standing in line and doing that type of thing, that's not for me. Amazon has literally changed my life. And I know that Bezos is a multi gazillionaire and all that type of stuff. But for me, to have the ability to sit on my ass on the couch while I'm watching football with the pellet stove burning and to sit there with my thumb and order Christmas presents is literally been like a, a game changer for me as far as shopping. Now, not just for Christmas gifts, but for me, I have a size 14 Triple E shoe. Do you know how impossible it was for me to find shoes growing up? Oh, there we go. We're right. on the same plane there. Right. I mean, for me, I can now, I just put in shoes, 14 triple E, and I've got 20 options that present themselves. I click, I buy, and they're at my house. I mean, I'm sure like you, if you had that problem, I'd have to go to seven stores before I could find someone. I always have to order mine. I never right. can buy them because I wear size 15. Right. And I never can order them because, you you know, I mean, where are you going to get a pair of triple E Nikes in Alabama? True. Can't I mean, it. so you just have to order size 15. Well, see, now I've had multiple problems with that, not just my shoes, you know, 14 triple E. Then with my gloves, I have like double extra large hands where I have yep. oversized gloves. Now, the other problem I had was when I played baseball and football as a catcher and a lineman to buy a cup. It was very difficult to find triple extra small as well in cup size. Because generally, guys with big hands and big feet have other parts of their body that are protruding and large. And for me, Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. So finding a triple extra small cup was very difficult, Jeremy. You know, John's not circumcised, ladies and gentlemen, because he told his wife the other night, he said, if I had an extra inch, I'd be a king. She said, honey, if you had less than another inch, you'd be a queen. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> it is true. That's the life that I live, man. It's, it's unfortunate, but it's true. No, you know, you know, you know what? Like, I never I never realized this, but 
John, have you ever been around somebody that that like go go back from your past or whatever, and then you go around them? Like I seen this girl one time. Me and my wife were together, and my wife, she's you know, my wife, you know, she's not big, but I mean, she's like five eleven, you know. Yeah. Oh, she's tall. Your wife's yeah. tall. My wife's five feet tall. I'm six four, and she's five feet. So your wife's five eleven. Wow. Yeah, my wife is a tall, tall woman. You? How tall are you? Uh six something. Oh, you're a big dude. Okay. All right. Um. So like. I think they measured me the other night. Flat foot, I'm 6'2". Okay, so you're a big man. Yeah. So I go I go through there. I'm walking down through there. And we see this girl, and she's like, she's like so tiny. And I'm like, I'm that big of a guy? <laughs> and so you, re- what you don't realize, you know the you know the giant that used to wrestle on, on like pro wrestling and stuff? Like, you remember that dude that like he was huge? Andre the Giant, like 7'4", 500 pounds, that guy? Yeah, like the no, 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 no. The one that was in the Water Boy, Water Boy. Oh, that guy. Yeah, yeah. I, can't, I don't know his name, but I know exactly who you're talking about. Yes. Yeah, he goes. He goes. You don't realize it. He was like. He was like. But the the bigger the guy you are, he was like. Everything's just proportionate to your body. That's true. He's That's like, true. if you put your your stuff on somebody else's, he's like. It's going to look massive. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. See, there we go. So maybe I'm not doing as bad as I thought. Well, no. The, the bad thing is, now all of you know that are in here. Now, Eric, I saw you came in. Welcome to the show, brother. Um, you know, for all you out there, you know, I, as you know, I, I updated people earlier in the show on my diet. I've now lost 50 pounds, 50 pounds. I've got another 40 to go. I was pretty heavy. But um, the, the one negative thing about that is now I can now see past my belly and see my penis again, which I guess is a good thing in a lot of circles. But for me, I'm looking down going, geez, you know, hopefully the continued weight loss will maybe like, make that look a little bit bigger. I guess that could be maybe my Christmas wish to, to hope maybe that uh, the, the smallest stomach makes my penis look bigger. But so far, that hasn't happened. But, you know, whatever. I mean, I can still hope, hope that that happens. But at this point, I've got four kids. You know, I'm 53 years old. My penis is more of a decoration now than anything else. I mean, my wife's like, listen, that thing's caused me enough trouble in my life. You gave me four kids. I had to go through pregnancy four times. Now we have four teenagers. I think she is just kind of assimilated like negative feelings towards my penis because it's brought her physical pain and now emotional pain with four teenagers living in our house. And all I can say to you, brother, is enjoy your daughter when she's little. I mean, I love my kids. My kids, I wouldn't trade them for the world. But man, when they get, you know, mine in 19, 16, 15, and almost 13, they become a lot more complicated in their teenage years. I can tell you that. We're trying to have more. I mean, you, yeah. How old your daughter again? I can't remember how old she is. She'll be seven. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So you've had some trouble having another, or are you just trying to have another one now? No, 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 no. We've had, we, my wife has had like problems. So when she, when my little girl was born, they, um, they found cysts all over her ovaries and stuff. Oh, boy. And uh, the doctor was like, yeah, he was like, uh, so she had to have a C section because my little girl was breached. Hey, Mr. A, what's up? And then, and then on top of that, she had to have cyst surgery while she was in there too. <laughs> Did she? And, oh, yeah, and so she's she's had she, she, we we've had a lot of problems this past time, and she's never been the same since. So I mean, we've it's it's difficult. I mean, people don't understand that you know that she'll be sitting there, and then she'll see somebody else like, oh, they're having another baby, and I mean, like, it, it, I guess it kind of drives me crazy too because I'll sit there and I'll be seeing people who don't need children. Yeah. And they they got like four kids, and I'm like, you don't even need one. I know. It's like, I wouldn't funny. even trust you raising a dog. You know what I mean? <laughs> now, so, some people, you know, it's funny. I see a lot of people, and you have to wonder what they thought going into it. I mean, for me, one of the things I really, really wanted, this was so important to me. And, you know, when I was young, I, I had, you know, I had challenges in my childhood. I've talked about that. For those of you that come into my show, you know the story. But I had kind of a rough childhood growing up. And I guess when it came down to it, it took me a while to figure out what I really wanted. That's why I didn't get married until I was 33. You know, I was afraid I was going to be a bad husband. I was afraid I was going to be a bad father. And I took my time because I, I didn't want to be bad at those things. So it took me a while to get to the point where I felt like I was ready. And trust me when I tell you, I'm far from perfect. You know, I think sometimes 
when you look at Facebook, when you look at Instagram, when you look at all the crap that people post online, you know, people make their lives look perfect. Believe me, I am a flawed man. I'm a flawed father. I'm a flawed husband. I'm not perfect, but I do try my best. And, you know, my wife and I got in an argument a couple of weeks ago. We didn't speak for a couple of days. It was primarily my fault. I was just being a douche. And, uh, you know, I can admit that freely, but I did apologize to her after a couple of days. And I said, listen, all I can say to you is, and I mean this, you know, I'm trying to be a better person. And she knows, you know, what I've been up against in my life. And I think that she really appreciated that. And, you know, she said, well, I know that you are. And, you know, she forgave me. And, you know, I, I've really been trying. I, I think, you know, trying to be a better person in your life is like a lifelong pursuit trying to improve. But you're right. There are a lot of people, I think, that I don't know what they were thinking when they had children. But I think some people almost look at children as like being accessories to their yep. Life, you know, they look good on a Christmas card, but really they don't spend time with their children. They don't invest in their children. And if you're going to have children, I mean, you need to spend time with them. You need to put an effort in, but you also need to be careful. And I'll, I'll tell you one more quick story before I go back to Cummings. But one thing that happened to me a few weeks ago, and this was actually part of the argument. You know, my son Ethan is, as I've as I've told you, is a very good baseball player. He's being recruited as a freshman by a lot of colleges already. He's playing in a college prospect showcase league this upcoming summer. He works with Rich Gedman, who used to coach for the Boston, who actually used to play for the Boston Red Sox and is now a triple A coach for the uh, Worcester Red Sox. And he told Ethan the other day, you keep doing what you're doing. You're going to be playing in the major league someday. But Ethan told his mother that I was putting too much pressure on him. So I disagreed. I didn't think that was actually the case, but it didn't really matter if I if I agreed or not. It was more about his perception of what I was doing. So I had a talk with him the other night and I said, listen, you, your mother mentioned to me that you, I was putting too much pressure on you. Can you explain that? And he told me, well, you know, you want me to uh, try out for indoor track if I don't make the basketball team. And I explained to him, I was like, listen, I really don't care whether you play basketball or indoor track, but the bottom line is you're not going to sit home and play Xbox. You know, what he did this fall, he decided not to play football, which is fine with me because he doesn't want to get injured. But he, he was saying if he didn't want to try out for basketball, he didn't want to do indoor track. But this fall, he was coming home saying he wanted to focus on his grades. But at the end of the quarter, he had gotten, you know, he had missed like four assignments in one class, three assignments in another class. He was underperforming on his grades, but saying he wanted to be a professional baseball player, this, that, and the other thing. So I said, listen, the bottom line is you have told me all along that your dream is to play in the major leagues. I don't care what your dream is. I don't care if you tell me today that you don't want to play anymore. That's fine. If you want to be an actor, if you want to be a pastor, if you want to be an astronaut, I don't care what it is, but my job as your father is to support you and to help you to the best of my ability to achieve your dreams. So if you, if you feel like I'm putting too much pressure on you, I apologize, but I want you to remember that I'm not intending to put pressure on you. I'm trying to support you and I'm trying to help you because I know in this life, people are going to try to beat you down. They're going to tell you that you can't do things. They're going to tell you that it's you know not worth going after a dream like that because you're never going to make it and you can't listen. So I'm trying to protect you from the negative influences in your life. And I'm trying to support you. And if that becomes too much, just tell me I'll back off. So I think, you know, the conversation went well, and I think it helped him to understand where I was coming from. But it also made me realize that, you know, while I felt I was doing positive things for him, he was viewing it as me putting too much pressure on him. So, you know, being a parent does become very complicated as you get older. And there's that fine line between being a good parent and being a pain in the ass, you know, and that's something that you know, I struggle with, I guess, sometimes. And I don't know, have you gotten to that point with your daughter yet? She's still young, so you may not be at that yet, at that level. Ah, uh, yeah, sort of. I mean, not at that level, but she's just like, uh, this past year, I tried to get her to play, uh, you know, her first year of softball. Right. I was like, yeah, you want to play softball? She's like, no, daddy, I don't want to play. Oh, that's too bad. I don't. Um, I was like, come on, you got to play softball. She's like, no, 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 daddy, I don't want to play. Like, I don't like that stuff. I'm like, okay, you don't like it. Well, and then she's like, daddy, I want to play basketball. And I'm like, you're not playing basketball because I know how their basketball is up there, like at our local rec center or whatever. Right. They like, you, you'll have games scheduled, like, you'll pay, like, I think it's like 50 bucks to play basketball. <laughs> Is that you, Eric? Playing some tunes for us? Um, 
Um, that that was my my alarm on my phone going off. Let okay. me know that the old man goes live in fifteen yeah. minutes. I know. I'm looking at my watch. I will be off. So for everybody in here that wants to go to the old man show, I get on <laughs> early this morning because I can't do after his show today. I'll make sure I'm off before the old man show starts, so you guys can shoot over there and get on to his uh-huh. show. He's doing a great show. So I'll make sure I'm, I wrap well, up. Well, go ahead, well, well, it's going to be a special show today. It's cooking with Dina, Joe, and Grammy. Oh. You know, Thanksgiving edition. Nice. Now that's a special show. I'll tell you, I love the family atmosphere atmosphere that the old man brings to his show. I love when he has Dina Joe and Grammy on and when you're on, that's amazing. So he is such a good guy. It's such a beautiful family show. And you know, we need more of those on, on pod Dean and across all different media platforms. So now coming, let me go back to you real quick about your daughter. So you talked about softball, you know, my daughter played softball for a long time and then eventually you know, she dealt with all the bullying in middle school, like we've talked about, and she ended up stopped playing. And she was really good. Like she played travel softball. She was the number four hitter on her team. But she finally told me, you know, I don't want to play anymore. So I was sad because I, you know, I coached her. For me, it was really quality father daughter time to be with her. But she, you know, she started doing some other things. She's acting. She's writing. She's more creative. You know, as I told you, she's written some books. She's she's really smart in school. So she wants to be a doctor like her mother. And, uh, you know, it's, it's hard, but it, it's good to continue to encourage your things, I think, to get involved. Because, I mean, if you don't, your kids will just sit at home. And when you go out and play sports, you meet friends. And I think it does help you a lot in life. But what, did she tell you what she wants to do as opposed to playing softball? She- no, like she's – she's. I always thought that, you know, I, I don't know. I was sort of, you know, in the sport. You know, I, well, I was. I've always been in the sports. And I, I thought my kids would always be in the sports. But maybe that's not going to be okay be the case but see that that was the deal with my grandpa the only thing like sports related that he would watch was alabama football like that was it and and uh he wouldn't watch the nfl he didn't give two flips about the nfl he didn't care about the nba he thought the nba was trash he was like this is this was one of the dumbest he said basketball so boring to watch and so me and him watched it i haven't watched it since larry bird played I, i i watched larry bird kevin McHale. I, I don't. I don't want. I try to watch the NBA. I just can't do it. It just doesn't interest me anymore. It's shoot a three pointer or a dunk. That's all it is now, and it's boring. Yeah, we watched. Uh, like when I was a kid, like me and my grandpa. This is a hundred percent true. Like we were two completely different people. Okay. And it's just like uh, he was into cars, fixing cars, being out. You know, do, doing stuff like that. And I was like, man, why do I want to go out there and fix that stupid car? I'll take it down there and spend an extra $50 and let the Mexican down the street fix it. Like, <laughs> that, that's the, you know, that, like I was always like one of those people. Yeah, and, I don't fix anything. I can't. Fi- my wife fixes things in my house. I can't fix anything. I can't do anything. I'm basically a man basically just identified by my penis alone i I don't have any skills that real men have so unfortunately you know i I do the laundry my wife fixes things that's what happens in our house which is kind of funny i was the ox i i I, kind of think you're i think i kind of think you were probably the same way yeah i I was the ox of the family like if any time anything needed to be lifted yes if anything that was heavy that needed to be done that that was my job yeah when my grandpa had the lumber yard I was the one that was picking everything up when I was 12 because when I was 12, I could pick up stuff that a 20 year old guy would have trouble picking up. I could do it because, you know, I was just built that way. You know, for me, I enjoy doing like outdoor landscaping. That to me, like, you know, our lawn at our house looks beautiful and, you know, the flowers look nice. And for me, I'm not doing it to impress anybody else. I like being outside. I enjoy doing it. For me, it's like a stress relief to be outside doing that stuff. So for me to go outside and spend a couple hours outside doing yard work, for me, I come inside feeling better that I get out. I did something. You know, the yard looks nice. It's nice for my family. And, you know, I'm not one of those people. Like, my kids will go in the backyard, and they play wiffle ball, and they, you know, wear paths in the lawn in the summertime and things like that. And I don't care. I just fix it. It's not a big deal to me. But it was funny. We, <laughs> we, we had this one friend that my daughter used to have. She used to go trick-or-treating over with her friends in this other neighborhood. You know, a lot of nice houses, kind of a Stepford type of neighborhood with, you know, big houses, nice houses, small yards. But anyway, I remember she went trick-or-treating one year with that group of friends. And the father was literally yelling at all the kids for running on their lawn and his lawn was nice but i mean for crying out loud you've got kids you don't want the kids outside at your house playing on your lawn i mean go out and let them play if they tear it up you throw down some seed and you fix it it's not the end of the world but to be that anal over your lawn just made no sense but you're right for me i was a guy that you know could lift things could pick things up i could do the heavy work i like doing landscaping 
But as far as building things, like, you know, my my wife had a father, my father-in-law, who was very handy. He could, you know, fix a car, change the brakes. He could do all those type of things. His two sons are the same way. His son, his son Walter, my brother-in-law, is amazing. He literally can build a computer. He can build a car. He owns a motorcycle parts business where he goes out and buys old motorcycles and sells their parts on eBay. He dis- dismantles them, sells the parts off. He also does storage auctions. He goes out and buys storage lockers. He's got a beautiful store now that he opened. I mean, the kid is one of the smartest kids I've ever met. He never went to college, really. He went for young one year, and I think he drank too much and he flunked out. But he uh, he's amazing. I mean, he makes a lot of money. You know, he's a smart guy and just super handy. And you know, when I talk to him, he usually loses me after a couple of sentences when he's trying to explain something to me because I just don't get it, you know. But I always respect people that are handy. I'm just not one of those people. Eric, I was Eric. always a freak. Like you're it, when you're talking about the when you're talking about picking the stuff up, I never did have. Dude, I had chicken arms. Yeah, I still do. But like, I, it's just like you you sit there and you watch it. Like we go to the gym or whatever. Some dude will be sitting there and he'll. Uh, I got chicken legs too. Well, he'll be sitting there and he'll he'll be uh he'll, he'll be squatting like five hundred pounds, and then I'll come right in behind him, and then like I'm sitting there and he's turning around, he's looking at me, and he's like, "This dude's squatting seven fifty. How is he do?" And he's got like muscles going everywhere, and I, I don't. I've never had that. Well, that was like Mac Jones. Mac Jones, you know, Patriots quarterback, made the comment lately. He, he someone mentioned something about steroids. He goes, "Look at my body. Does it look like I take steroids?" He'll take a look. At, take a look at me. We, I'll tell you. But and we've only got a few minutes left. I'm going to talk very, very briefly about Waukesha and what happened there at the very end of the show. And I'm going to get off before the old man starts. So we've only got like four or five minutes. But um, Mac Jones, man, we love him in New England. I do think the Patriots are going to get to the Super Bowl this year. And it's not just because of Mac Jones. Bill Belichick has built a team. Their offense is killing it. Their defense is ridiculous. And they are not just like a Tom Brady run team. They are a football team this year. They can throw it. Oh, yeah, they can throw it, they can run it, they can play defense, they can do everything. And I'll tell you, you know, I don't know if they can get by Buffalo, but if they can, I could see them get to the Super Bowl. Oh, have you not seen Buffalo? Do you not see what happened to Buffalo yeah, the other day? They don't look great. I mean, they look weak. I, you know, they, they don't look like they're peaking at the right time of the year. You know, going I think forward. they'll get by everybody in the AFC because, I mean, who they got to beat? The Chiefs? Right. The Chief, Chiefs have no defense. Patrick Mahomes has picked Mahomes this year. And, uh, and after losing to Brady, kind of like what happened to Cam Newton back in the day after he lost the Super Bowl and choked, he fell apart. It looks like Mahomes is kind of doing the same thing this year. Those running quarterbacks, man, I'm, I'm telling you, that's why people like uh, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Mac Jones now, that, that's why they're going to play in the league for a – that's why Mac's going to be in the league. And I, I heard uh, uh, Troy Aikman say at the uh, Thursday night when he was on Thursday Night Football, he was like, why would Belichick retire? He was like, he's got his signal caller for the next 15 to 20 years. It's true. It's true. They've done it. I mean, they've got a young team and they're going to be good. So, uh, hey, thank you for your uh, transition of sending Mac Jones from Alabama to New England. We greatly appreciate it. So oh, you I, I wanted to see it, man. Yeah. I told you, dude was Brady. I was like, this is Brady yeah. 2.0. We love him up here. He is he is getting all the love in New England. Let me tell you, people love him up here. Hey, all right, let me get to this really quickly, and then we're going to end it before the old man show. Uh, yeah, I got to run anyway. I'll, I'll, I'll see you, buddy. I'm going to run this up, and then we're going to go. Take care, Jeremy. All right, so what happened in Wisconsin? I want to just go after this really quickly. I want to say quick prayers to everyone involved as to what happened, where, again, a career criminal, Daryl Brooks, drove into a crowd of people. At this point, he has now killed six people and injured 60 more people. I was going to talk about this earlier and just never got around to it, but I do want to address it. You know, in this country, when are we going to start taking criminals seriously? This can't be a political issue anymore. This can't be Democrat. This can't be Republican. If you have a criminal that's been out there and a criminal that has a lengthy criminal record. I mean, this guy was just let off on a $5,000 bond a short time ago for a major crime. Now you've got this guy that obviously had some type of mental illness, obviously had something wrong with him, driving into a crowd of people at a Christmas parade and ending the lives of grandmothers, a young eight-year-old boy injuring just dozens upon dozens of people. I think it's up to 60 people now have been injured severely in this. And that shows too, you know, you hear all the time about, you know, take away the guns. People who want to hurt people don't need guns. They'll use a car. They'll use a pressure cooker. They'll use an airplane. People will find a way to injure others. It's not just about the guns or the method. It's about the people that are unbalanced and have mental issues and are not punished. This guy should have been put away 
whether it's in jail or in a psychiatric facility to help him. And again, because we did not do our due diligence as a country, this person now just killed a bunch of people, injured a bunch of others. And this is similar to what I talked about with the whole Gabby Petito, Brian Laundry situation. I mean, you had police that pulled these two over. And again, this wasn't a hate crime. Well, I guess it was, but now you get a situation with these two young people. If the police had just separated them, separated them that day, when they pulled them over in Moab, Utah, and had taken the two of them apart, called parents, and got people involved, maybe you know uh, G- Gabby Petito would not have been dead, and maybe Brian Laundry wouldn't have taken a gun and blown his head off after he killed her. This, those were two lives that were thrown away when they could have been saved. And I, th- I think it's it's time in this country. You know, we hear about Build Back Better, and we hear about all these other things that are going on. When are we going to address? crime and when are we going to address the mental illness problem that we have in this country you know erica you don't have much time but what do you think on that i wanted to hear your opinion I mean, we're uh, going to end this in two minutes so go ahead i mean it's unfortunate that um that 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 we keep letting letting you know hardened criminals like this um walk free on our streets and you know and and we don't seem to want to you know th- you know solve problems that is wrong with our country because in order to find solutions you've got to identify the problem it's true it's absolutely true we need to do something listen we are we have a a couple minutes till old man starts why don't you run off some of your promotions in the the show go ahead buddy um if you're new to the to the john devito show podcast um and haven't already done so john would would most definitely appreciate it if you would just hit that follow button so you get notifications when he goes live with new shows and when he publishes shows. But in the meantime, um, here's a, here's a list of some great podcast shows that the, the John DeVito show supports in that I'm confident might be up the alleys of our, of our friends. You've got um, the pirate radio podcast with our good friend, Jimmy. You've got the paddy wagon express. Um, You've got um, Mike Tampa Bay. You've got freedom warrior the dude Sean and real Patriots voice um, and newer entities like no filter radio, real conservative talk and the Podfather show, which is on Fridays at 10 PM Eastern time. You've got the Ralph William podcast mornings on Podbean plus impromptu shows. The old man's podcast with Dina, Joe and Eric going live at 10 AM Eastern time weekdays and Fridays at 11 PM Eastern time. Um, You've got the Frankie D show on Wednesdays and Fridays around 3 and 4 p.m. Eastern time. You've also got um, the Axiom World podcast, South Oz Man, and you've also got Slack 82 Alpha Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. You've got The Swap Doesn't Lie Fridays, 7 p.m. Eastern time. The Beans and Weenie show, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 8.30 p.m. Eastern time, as well as Chuck and Billy's Not Your Cup of Tea um, whenever they're on and. Brian and Rebecca's Planet ADHD and to Laura and Lou's Communication Station, Pink Squirrel, Linga Longa, Crazy Train, Cold Train, Homeboy 88, The John Gale Show, weekdays, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. You've also got Just Woke Up with, with T. Wolf Price, a.k.a. Toby, The Art of Floundering with Will Dick, if you love, um, you know, satire, e- explicit puppet shows. You've got um, Friendship with Robert and Laura. The It's Doomsday podcast, late nights on Podbean. You've also got the Slightly Serious Show, Monday through Friday, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Over on YouTube, you've got Odyssey of Ascension with Roxanne, the Exotics Radio podcast, formerly The Talking Corner with Cracks, and so many more great podcast friends worth checking out, and, and as well as The Gray Area. You've also got the Ethoism podcast on Monday, 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. Eastern Time. You know, you know and that list just keeps growing. You know, and ho- hopefully um, friends of ours keep keep supporting these great podcast friends for great conversation and entertainment and um, and be, be looking for John DeVito to do do more impromptu shows and more, you know, su- substantive interviews with people. And and I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to him so he can start wrapping this bad boy up. Yeah. So everybody, I just want to wish you all a happy Thanksgiving. I hope you guys have a great day tomorrow. Make it about family. Try not to have any of the uh, family issues come up, arguments. You know, don't talk politics. Don't talk religion. Try to leave all those negative things out. And I hope everyone has a wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, I appreciate each and every one of you. Eric, thank you so much for joining me. Jeremy Cummings, thank you for joining me. And make sure for those of you that Love are you. still God bless here, you, everybody. And yeah. we want to wish you. you all very happy Thanksgiving this year. And we'll see you soon.
Yeah, make sure you head over to the Old Man Show. Grammy and uh, Dean and Joe are going to be talking cooking today. So get over and enjoy that. I love all you and have a great day. Take care, everybody. Bye now.